أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واللاتي ياتين الفاحشة من نسائكم فاستشهدوا عليهن أربعة منكم فإن شهدوا فأمسكوهن في البيوت حتى يتوفاهن الموت ويجعل الله لهن سبيلا صدق الله العظيم Now before we start with the second issue let me say something more about this law of inheritance. As many of you must be recalling, the first directive that came regarding this inheritance was the ayah in the 22nd section of Surah Al-Baqarah. قُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذَا حَذَرَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ إِنْ تَرَكَ خَيْرًا لِلْوَسِيَّةُ لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ حَقًّا عَلَى الْمُتَّقِينَ That was the first instruction. That if a person is dying and he is leaving some property behind him, he must make a will, a bequest. And that will should be in favor of the parents and relatives. It should not happen that all the property is possessed by one son or the only sons, nothing to daughters, nothing to the parents. They are left without anything. But the still there was, the portions were not fixed. And at that time, this wasiya, this making a will, was fard, imperative. Kotiba alaykum. It has been written upon you that you must make a bequest, you must make a will before dying. That whatever I am leaving behind, well, such and such portion should be given to my father, such and such portion should be given to my mother, and to such and such persons. That was a must for every dying Muslim. But now when this law of inheritance was revealed in this Surah Al-Nisa, that ayah stands abrogated. It is mansukh. Now making a will is not essential, not imperative. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has himself fixed the portions that the parents will be getting, that the sons will be getting, that the daughters will be get, getting, that the wife will be getting, or the husband will be getting out of the, the property of the deceased wife. So actually now there can be no wasiya lil waris. But you know, this is the relationship between Sunnah and Quran. The Prophet ﷺ restricted this right of wasiya to one third of the total property. Number one, it is not first now. If somebody dies without making any will, it's okay. No harm to him. He has not acted against the advice of the Sharia. But if he wants to make a will in favor of some friend, in favor of some institution, some center, some, you know, good work of charity is going on and he wants that some part of his, his property should be given to that institution, then he can make a will, a bequest only up to the one third of the total value of whatever he is leaving behind. And number two, he cannot make any bequest in favor of those whose portions have been fixed by this law of inheritance. These two things you must keep in mind. Now the second issue which is being dealt here in this Surah Al-Nisa is that of sex discipline. Sex anarchy and sex discipline. These two things are very different and opposite to each other. There was a sex anarchy in, in the Arabian society before the advent of Islam. And very gradually, Quran... And for that matter, the Prophet ﷺ, they discipline that society, the, the sex, you know. Now, neither Quran says that sex is evil. No, it's not evil, it's natural. It's a natural urge. So actually, it must be placed within limits, must be controlled. There should be no anarchy, it must be disciplined. 
So now these issues will be discussed one by one. Wallati yatin al fahishat amin nisaikum. As for those of your women who commit some adultery, of your women, Muslim women, فَاسْتَشْهِدُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ أَرْبَعَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ So you call four witnesses over her, but those witnesses should be minkum, Muslims, not non-Muslims. Now you keep in mind that this society up till that time at Medina was a mixed society. Muslims were there, even the pagan Arabs were there, out of the tribes of Aus and Khadraj, who had not accepted Islam up till now. Then the third element was the Jews. Three very strong tribes of the Jews were present in Medina. So it was a fixed society. And actually what we call a state. The state had not been established up till now. The authority was distributed. The whole jurisdiction was not there for the Prophet ﷺ. That is why this ayah. Now supposing a Muslim woman has committed adultery and she has committed this sin with some non-Muslim. And that non-Muslim, that Jew, for example, is not within the jurisdiction of the Muslim course or the Muslim system order. What to do? So this ayah is pertaining to that case. Wallati yatin al fahishata min nisaikum. As for your women, if someone among them commits that sin, fasta shedu alayhin arbatam minkum. So you call four witnesses, those witnesses from the Muslims. Fine Shahidu, if they testify that yes, we saw this woman committing this sin. Farm Sekuhunna fil Buyut. Now you restrain them, confine them to their homes. They will not be allowed to go out of the homes. Restricted confinement. As if now their homes will be like jails for them. They will be imprisoned in their homes. Hatta yata wafahun al bath. Till that time that death takes them away. It's a lifelong imprisonment. Till death. Or till such time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens another way for them. That way was when the last, you know, injunction came about this adultery. What's the punishment? That is in Surah An-Nur. That was the sameel that Allah opened. But till the revelation of those ayat of Surah An-Nur, this was the order, and this had to be abided by. وَاللَّاتِي يَاتِينَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مِنْ نِسَائِكُمْ فَاسْتَشْهِدُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ أَرْبَعَةً مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ شَهِدُوا فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ فِي الْبُيُوتِ حَتَّى يَتَوَفَّاهُنَّ الْمَوْتِ أَوْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُنَّ سَبِيلًا وَاللَّزَانِ يَاتِيَانِهَا مِنْكُمْ And as for those two, who have committed this sin of adultery and fornication, and both of them are from you, both are Muslims, legal Muslims, then what to do? Now, both are in the jurisdiction of the Muslim society. Both will belong to the same society. For what, what is the commandment? Fazu huma. Punish them both. Now, the, what type of punishment is to be given is not described here. Any type of tazir, any type of punishment, you can strike them, you can keep them in the confined somewhere. So that can be decided. That could be decided. It can't be decided now because now the final judgment, final injunctions have been revealed in Suratun Nur. But till that time, this was the injunction that had to be kept. But if they repent and they mend their ways, they promise, make solemn pledge, never to commit it again, then let them go their way. Farizu an huma inna Allah kana tawwaban rahima, because verily Allah Taala is very much acceptor of tawbah, and He is very much merciful. Now, because this subject of tawbah will come now many a times, so let me explain here what is tawbah. Taba yatubu tawban means in Arabic to return, to come back. Taba yatubu tawban. And very close is the word aba yaubu auban. Aba yaubu auban, taba yatubu tawban. They are very close in meaning. That is why there is 
a masnoon prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whenever he went out for some journey and when he came to his home, what was the prayer? Aibuna, taibuna, li rabbina hamiduna. We are coming back, not only to our home, but also returning to our Allah. And we are praising our Lord, who kept us, you know, safe during this journey. And he allowed us to return to our homes and families safe and sound. Aibuna, taibuna, li rabbina hamiduna. What is Tawbah to return? Now, what does it mean? You know, the relationship between Allah and his abd, his servant, his born man is that they are face to face. Allah is pleased with him. He is pleased with Allah. Razi Allahu anhum wa radu an. Allah is pleased with them. And they are pleased with Allah. Allah is their wali and they are the wali of Allah. Allahu wali yu lazina amanu yukhrijuhum min azulumati ilan noor. Allah inna awliya Allah ila khofun alayhi wa lahum yazanun. Now, this is the relationship. Now, if this person, this bondsman, this servant of Allah, this Muslim, this Mormon, he has committed some sin. It is as if he has turned his face away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the result? Allah also turns his face from him. Now, he is returning towards Allah. He is making repentance. He is making tawbah. So he is making tawbah. And then the result is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also turns his face again towards him with mercy and compassion. So this is a bilateral phenomenon. Allah is tawwab and man is tawwab. Tawwabun. People who, who do tawbah and they, they do tawbah. Whenever they have committed something wrong, immediately they turn to Allah. They repent. Ask for his forgiveness. And it is Tawbah. And Allah also returns to him with his mercy, his forgiveness, his compassion. So both sides, Tawbah. So you must be keeping all these facts about Tawbah in view. When this word comes and there is going to be discussed, you know, uh, a very uh, fundamental rule about this Tawbah is going to be discussed in this section, inshallah. Now, the, 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 those ayat have come. In namat Tawbah to. على الله للذين يعملون سوء بجهالة. This acceptance of توبة is due on Allah. Just imagine what is Allah saying? It is due on me. I have to accept the repentance of my bondsman, my abd, my servant. But in what case? In نما توبة تو على الله للذين يعملون سوء بجهالة. For those who commit something wrong, commit something evil, but only out of ignorance. Ignorance or there is some overflooding of emotions. There are emotions. Somebody is overpowered by his emotions and he has committed some sin. But you know, emotions, they are very temporary. They come and go. So immediately he repents. When the flood has gone, now... He recalls, what have I done? He comes to his senses. I have done a mistake. I have committed a sin. Just as you know, if somebody is riding a cycle on a rainy day, the road is slippery, and he slips. But no sooner than he slips, he just rises up immediately. He doesn't keep lying on the road. Absolutely. Immediately he stands up. In the same way, if there is some sin committed out of ignorance or out of an outburst of emotion, but then he turns quickly to repentance. Quickly. He doesn't delay it. إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ سُوَى بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَاكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ for these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also turns his face. He returns to them with mercy, with forgiveness, with compassion. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever knowing, ever wise. Now note here, when this word taba comes as a verb, for the man, for the bondsman, for the servant, it will be followed by ila, taba ila, tubu ilallah. You turn and return to Allah. And when this comes as a word for Allah, 
it will be followed by ala yatubu allah alayhim ila ala he is higher up we are lower down we are returning to him he is also returning to us but from a higher position so for that ala ulaika yatubu allah alayhim in wakala allah aliman hakima wa laysati tawbatu lil ladina ya'maluna as-sayyi'at and this repentance it is not for those no the repentance of those will not be acceptable to allah who go on committing sins and disobeying allah hatta idha hadara ahaduhu al-maut till that time that death comes and stands before him now he is seeing the death eye to eye with death then he says qala inni tubtu lan and he says now i repent i beg repentance I ask the forgiveness of Allah. No, the doors of Tawba from Allah's side are closed. Walal illa lazina yamutu na wahum kufar. In the same way, this was the Tawba of the Muslims. He is a legal Muslim, but he is committing sins. He is contravening the laws of Sharia, transgressing the limits of the Sharia, and he is doing it, doing it, doing it. till such time that death comes and then he says i make toba i repent no this repentance is not acceptable to allah and in the same way this repentance this repentance is not for the kuffar wal wal ladina yamutu na wa hum kuffar who so ever dies as a disbeliever there is no question of any toba for him ulaika atarna lahum azaban alima for such persons we have prepared a punishment a chastisement which is very painful alim alam alam nak we use in urdu alam nak so alam is is you know pain alima painful punishment ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la yahillu lakum an yattarisu an-nisa kurha karha oh who believe it is not permissible for you that you take women as inheritance forcibly now this was a very bad custom in the among the arabs because some person might have 10 wives maybe that he has son only from one or two all the rest are issueless now this son after the death of the father he will inherit these wives of father they are not mothers for him the mother is only out of who, whose womb he was born she is only the mother not all the other wives so they are also like property and they inherited them and they had all control just as the owner of a property has a control over it he can do anything with it so they used to do anything with them to control them they were the inheritors of their mothers step mothers and also they used to marry them although they were the mothers they were married to their fathers but this was the custom in arabs although they disliked it but it was there in the, in the coming following ayah you will find this also now this is being reformed here don't do this this is wrong the iman are not like property not like camels or goats or sheep to be inherited ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la yahillu lakum an tarisu an-nisa karha wa la ta'zuluhunna li tazhabu bi ba'd ma ataytumuhunna and second mischief which was being done to the women was one has married a wife and he has given her a big sum lot of gold as a dowry as a bridal money now after some time he is you know somehow or the other he is putting her in difficulty so that she wants a divorce and then he would say now return to me the wealth that i gave to you then i will let you go otherwise you have, have you will have to remain here and you will have to have all the persecution that i i give to you so that is the second thing that is being corrected here wala ta'zuluhunna li tazhabu bi ba'd ma ataytumuhunna and don't put constraints upon them so as to take from them some part of that which you gave them at the time of the marriage illa an yatina bi fahishatin mubayyana now this punishment can be given only in case if they have committed adultery if they have committed such a big crime then they deserve punishment not in any other case 
وآخرهن بالمعروف and live with them in an honorable way in a gentle way honorable way live with them muashara aashiru hunna this is muasharat but this muashara should be in a very gentle way honorable way they are also human beings don't treat them as as captives don't treat them as as, as cattle they are also human beings aashiru hunna bil maruf wa in karehtumu hunna if you dislike them maybe somebody had some fancy for some woman and he and he you know married her but later on he developed some dislike for her wa in karehtumu hunna fa asa an takrahu shay'an wa yaj'al Allah fihi khayran kaseera if you somehow dislike them but you must think that maybe that you might be disliking disliking something and Allah might have put the much good in it for you so keep keep it to the, to allah subhanahu wa taala and don't you know decide all the matters for your own self so if, even if some aspect of that woman is not liked by you try to look into her personality another aspect is her character her knowledge her gentle behavior that might make her lovable for you wa in aratu istibdala zawjin makada zawjin and now if this relationship between wife and and husband is strained and one wants to change to divorce one wife and have another wife in in marriage in aratu istibdala wa zawjin makada zawjin if you have decided you want to change one wife for another one wa ataitum ihdahunna qintaran and you have given to the former wife to the first wife heaps of gold qintaran even heaps of gold you have given them la ta khudu minhu shay'an now you cannot take it back from them you cannot take anything from back from them ata khudu nahu buhtanan do you want to take it back slandering them wa isma mubina and it's a manifest sin it's a very clear sin now if you are divorcing her whatever you gave her it is her property let her take it away with with her don't take anything back this aya was quoted by an old lady in the time of the caliphate of hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala during the caliphate of hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala who it became customary with the muslims to have big sums of dowry alf alf a dinar well i i give okay in dowry so the the caliph the pious caliph hazrat umar thought it is wrong it must be controlled so he put a ceiling he issued an ordinance that now there will be no mehr more than this ceiling this limit now a lady an old lady he stopped him on his way and said to him o oh umar how can you put a limit on our right this is the right of women we can demand whatever dowry we want and this is the right granted to us by allah subhanahu wa taala when allah has not put any limit to that dowry who are you to put a limit and she quoted this aya ataitum ihdahunna qintara when quran says if even you have given one of them heaps of gold you can't take it back from them so there is no limit to the sum of dowry and you can't fix a limit or a ceiling to it and then hazrat umar radhi allah taala nu said today a woman has taught umar the deen of allah and he took back his command or his ordinance ordinance abrogated wa kayfa ta'khudunahu and how can you take that dowry back from your wife wa qad afza ba'dukum ila ba'din while you have been very close to each other while you have been going into her you had that relationship of husband and wife qad afza ba'dukum ila ba'din wa khazna minkum misaqan ghaliza and they had taken from you the solemn pledge and solemn covenant this nikah is a very sacred covenant it's a very sacred agreement so after nikah 
and at the time of nikah, you have given her that much amount, that much property in dowry as a bridal money. Now you count. You know in the Western society, because in Christianity there can be no divorce. Once married, married forever. The Catholics up till date, they don't allow any divorce. They only allow you can live separately. You can't divorce. And even if you are living separately, you can't marry anybody, anybody else, neither the man nor the woman. The Protestants now are allowing divorce, but only if you can prove, if one of the spouses can prove, you know, that the other spouse has committed adultery. For that, you know, now you, the cases and the fabrications and all those things, the cases, you know, fought on the basis of this. And even then, they don't also allow no marriage. You know, King Edward the Eighth, he had to abdicate the throne because he married a widow American woman. The Church of England didn't allow him. No, she she was divorced or she was a widow. How can you marry her? You can't marry a widow. And the same case happened with Margaret, the princess. She couldn't, she was not allowed to marry Townsend, Captain Townsend. Same case is happening now between Diana, Lady Diana and you know, the uh, Charles, yes. Sir. How? If he gives the divorce, then he will have to abdicate the throne. The throne will go to the son now, not to him. So these are the rules in Christianity. Because, you know, there is no divorce, no concept of divorce in Christianity. But in Islam, you know, there is divorce. Maybe that the both cannot reconcile. Maybe their likes and dislikes are very much different, opposite to each other. They can't live together in harmony, with, with love and affection. So it's better to separate. And he can marry also, and she can marry also after the idda, after that time that that period has finished. This nikah, I was saying, is misaq galiz. It's very solid covenant. And don't marry those women who were married to your fathers. They used to marry the mothers, the stepmothers. They thought, my mother is only the woman out of her, whose womb I have been born. Now this, this was the wife of my father, but she is not a mother to me. Islam has raised the status of women. Every woman married to your father is your mother. You can't marry her. Except what has already passed. You know, you have to condone whatever has been committed, mistakes, before these commandments were revealed, so those mistakes have to be condoned. Illa maqassala. What has happened, happened. Forget about it. But now abide by the rules. Innahu kana fahishatam wa makta. It was very indecent and very hateful. Wasa sabila and in a very evil way to marry the wives, the widows of the deceased father. Hurramat alaykum, now a very big law of Islam. Whom you cannot marry, the women whom you can never marry. Hurramat alaykum, forbidden to you in marriage are, number one, ummahatukum. Your mothers, mothers, grandmothers, paternal grandmothers, maternal grandmothers. Wabanatukum. And your daughters, daughters of your daughters, daughters of your sons, down. Wahawatukum, and your sisters. Wahamatukum, and your paternal aunts. Wahalatukum, and your maternal aunts. Wabanatul Ache, and the daughters of your brothers. Wabanatul Ukte, and the daughters of your sisters. Wahumahatukum, and Lati Arbanakum. And those of your mothers who have suckled you, mothers by suckling, who have suckled you, and they have also become mothers to you. 
in the same way the daughters of the suckling mothers, you know, they are also haram. Akhawatukum, your sisters. Now they have become your sisters. Because you also, you have had the, the you know, milk of the same woman, which the, the, the daughter of that woman has taken. And also the mothers of your wives. And your foster sisters and your stepdaughters who are under your wardship and guardianship. From Min Nisaikumullati Dakhaltum Behinna. Min your wives in whom you have gone. You have married a woman. She was married to another person before. Who was, who was deceased, who died, or who divorced her. And she had a daughter from the former husband. Now when you have married this woman, that daughter has come also. Now you are the guardian. You are the stepfather of that daughter. You can't marry her also. But if you have not had the sexual intercourse with this woman, and you have divorced it, the divorce her again, without having a sexual, inter sexual intercourse, then you can marry the daughter of such a woman, such a wife, with whom you didn't have any sexual intercourse. If you have not gone into them, if you have not had the sexual intercourse with them, so it is not forbidden for you to marry the daughters of such women. And also forbidden are for you the wives of your sons. But sons those, Allazina min aslabikum. Who are from your own loins, not the so-called sons, the adopted sons. There is no, no question of any adopted son in Islam. Nothing of the sort. The sons are only from your own loins, who are from your own progeny. And it is also illegal for you to have two sisters at once, at one time in your marriage. You can't marry the sister of your wife. You can't join them together. At one time. And here also please note that the Prophet ﷺ has added to this list. You can't have two sisters in marriage at one time. You can't have one woman and the paternal aunt or the maternal aunt of that woman at one time as wives. So the Quran says only sisters. But the Prophet added the wife and the paternal aunt. They can't be added together in one marriage. One woman and the maternal aunt, they can't be taken together by one person in marriage. Illa ma pat salaf. Except what has already passed, what has been done in the past, well, that is to be condoned. Inna Allah kana ghafoor ar Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. Wal muhsanatu min al nisa and also those women who are married to other people, muhsanat. Now please understand this word, hissen. Hissen means a fort. Hissen. Muhsan is one who is fortified, protected within the walls of a fort. Muhsan. Muhsana is a woman who is in the protection of a husband already, who is in the fort. That marriage, bond of marriage is like a force for her. And that is a protection for her. The husband is to protect her chastity. So that is the muhsanat. So women who are already married to other people, who are in the fort of nikah already, they are also haram for you. You can't marry them. So that is another list, the thing added to that list. Illa ma malakata manukum. But there is an exception to this. If a non-Muslim woman, she came to you as a captive, as a slave girl, although she has a husband, you know, back home, but now her status has changed. She's a captive. She's a slave girl. Now you can marry him, her. So this is an exception. Although she is married, but the husband is back home. He's not here. And she has been captured in war, in battle, by the Muslims. So already, uh, 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 even if she has been married to some person, she can be taken in marriage by a Muslim. Kitabullahi alaykum. 
This is the ordinance of Allah upon you. These relations, these, you know, don'ts, don't marry this, don't marry this, don't marry this. These are muharramat abadiyah. We can never marry your own daughter. You can never marry your own sister. You can never marry your own mother. You can never marry the, the daughters of your brothers or sisters, and so on and so on. وَأُهِلَّ لَكُمْ مَا وَرَا عَزَالِكُمْ أَنْ تَبْتَغُوا بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ And the rest of all women, they are permissible for you. They are allowed for you. They are halal for you. That you take them into marriage. أَنْ تَبْتَغُوا بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ Through your, your wealth, you pay them the dowry, the mahar. مُحْسِنِينَ غَيْرَ مُسَافِرِينَ But the intention should be to, to bring her into the fort of nikah. Muhsinin, ghaira musafiheen. It should be in wedlock and not in license or fornication. Not only you know you to satisfy your sexual urge. No. This is going to be a sacred relationship. A lifelong relationship of a husband and a wife. That is the way that you can have a woman in marriage. Not you know a timely pleasure. Just you know a sensual gratification at a time. That is not permissible. That is haram. That is fornication. So, غير مرسلين غير مسافرين فما استعتم به من به منهن فاتوهن ودورهن فريضة. Now, if when you have benefited from them, you have taken the the sexual pleasure from them, you must pay them their mahr, their dowry. You must pay them. ولا جنا عليكم في ما تراضيتم به من بعد الفريضة. But if after fixing the amount of the dowry, if by mutual agreement you, you decide something else. Maybe you say, I will give more. Maybe she says, well, I can accept less. I leave some part of it for you. alaykum. So there is no, no blame on you. Inna Allah kana haliman, aliman hakima. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing, all wise. Wa man lam yastatai minkum ta'lan an yankihal mursanat min al mursanat al muminat. As for those of you who don't have the capacity, cannot afford to marry free believing women, free woman, believing woman, mu'minat, muhsanat. If you can't marry them, because you have to pay the dowry, you are poor, you don't have anything. You might have seen in Saudi Arabia, people you know, they ask for charity, because I have to pay the dowry. I want to, to get married, I don't have the money with me, so please help me, so that I can have that amount with which I can go and marry. So that is also something, you know, for which people are begging in, in, that, in that country. So, one lam yastatay min kum taunam. Whosoever amongst you doesn't have, can't afford, doesn't have the money, so that he can marry a yankihil muhsanatil muaminat, free believing women, so as a concession, you are allowed to marry the slave girls. Min mu'minat. But only the slaving girls who have become mu'mins, who have, who have accepted and embraced Islam. If a slave girl comes to you as a captive, she remains a mushrik or kafir, you can't marry her. Marriage will not be able but you will not be permissible, but you can have relationship with her as a captive, but it will not be a marriage. She will not get the status of a wife. The status of a wife will be attainable only by a Muslim woman. Although she was a captive, she, was, she came as a slave girl, but she has embraced Islam. She is still a captive girl, but you can marry her. Wallahu alamu bi imanikum. Allah knows very well about your iman, whether you have iman or not, whether she has iman or not. So what is to be decided is on the basis of Islam, not iman. Whether she is a Muslim or not, whether you are a Muslim or not. All the legal matters are based on Islam, not on iman. Because iman is something hidden in your hearts. Wallahu alamu bi imanikum. Only Allah knows about iman, whether you have iman or not, whether I have iman or not. But I am a Muslim, you accept me as a Muslim. You are a Muslim, I accept you as a Muslim. Ba'adukum min ba'adun. You are from each other. After all, even if she is a slave girl, she is a human being. She is from the, from the progeny of Adam and Eve. Ba'adukum min ba'ad. So this is only a level, you know, in this society for arrangement, for management. But you know, all human beings are equal. 
بعض کم من بعض فن کے ہو ہننا بے از لے اہد ہننا سو یو کین میری دین دی سلیو گرلز بٹ ود دی پرمیشن اف دیئر ماسٹرز می بی دی سلیو گرل بلونگز ٹو می اینڈ سم بڈی سم مسلم یو نو اے پور مسلم ہی آسک دی پرمیشن فرام می کین آئی میری یور سلیو گرل And if I allow, then, the, then she will become the wife of that person. And now I will not have the right to have any sexual relationship with that slave girl. That is stopped now here. Because I permitted him to marry her. And them also, to them also you give their, their mahar. Bil maruf in a proper way. Bil maruf e muhsanatin ghaira musafihatin. You take these slave girls also to have the, the in the fort of nikah, not only to have the sexual pleasure. Wala muttaqidat yaqdan, and also not to have any hidden relationship, any hidden friendship. Faiza or sinna. Now, if they become, they come in nikah of a Muslim, of a Muslim, although they are slave girls, now they are the wives. Fa. فَعَلَيْهِنَّ نِسْفُ مَا عَلَى الْمُحْسَنَاتِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ Now, if they commit something indecent, some, some adultery, the punishment given to them will be half of the punishment for the free and free believing women. ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَشِيَ الْعَنَةَ مِنْكُمْ And this is the concession which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed for those of you who fear that, that they, can, they may fall into some sin. If somebody is without marriage, maybe he can go astray. So he wants to marry, anyhow, but he doesn't afford, he can't afford to marry a free believing woman. So it's the concession that they can marry the slave girls, provided number one, they are Muslims. Number two, they, it is can be done with the permission of the masters. Now if they are your wives, you have to pay them the dowry. And now if they commit any any adultery or something of that type, then the punishment which is to be given to them will be half of the punishment of those who are regular and who are free momin wives. And if you can have patience, if you can go without marriage, without marrying a slave girl, because you can't accept that level of morality from her. The level of morality of free women belonging to respectable families is something else. And the level of morality that you can expect from people, from these slave girls who have been captives, who have been, you know, having the uh, sexual relationship with their masters, the, the, the level cannot be the same. So to choose, try not to marry the slave girls, but if you think that you can fall into some sin, bigger sin, You may go towards adultery or fornication, then it is better. This is the concession from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that at least you, you marry a slave girl. And if you can have patience, if you can hold yourself, then it is better for you. Wallahu ghafuru rahim. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. Yuridullahu la yubayyina lakum. Now these two ayat are very important. All these injunctions, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Maybe if man feels, well, it's very burdensome. So many commandments, so many restrictions, so many limitations. Why shouldn't there be free sex or group sex? There should be everything. You know, if a man is thirsty, he can take water from anywhere. If you, have, you feel a sexual urge, well, satisfy it from somewhere. Why all these restrictions? These are philosophies of the day. People argue that way. There are arguments in favor of that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لَيُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends to make everything clear to you, to you وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ And He wants to lead to, lead you to the path and to the ways of those سُنَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ who were before you من الصديقين والشهداء والصالحين People on whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed His favors and His mercy Allah wants you to take to their path, to follow them This ayah will come, inshallah, in this very surah. وَمَنْ يُتْعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ فَأُولَائِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَائِكَ رَفِيقًا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ سُنَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَيَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah wants to turn to you in, in compassion, in mercy, in love. 
واللہ علیم الحکیم اینڈ اللہ از آل نوئنگ آل وائس واللہ یورید ان یتوب علیکم اگین اللہ انٹینس to return to you with his mercy with his favors with his grace with his glory wa yuridu alladhina yattabi'una ash-shahwat and as for those who are following their passions their animal instincts their lusts and desires their id and libido wa alladhina yattabi'una ash-shahwat wa yuridu alladhina yattabi'una ash-shahwat they want they intend that you should ان تمیلو میل عظیم یو شوڈ ڈیویٹ فرام دی رائٹ پاتھ اے ویری گریٹ ڈیویشن پیپل وانٹ ٹو ٹیک یو ایسٹرے پیپل وانٹ ٹو لیڈ یو ٹو رانگ پاتھ بٹ اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ وانٹس یو ٹو کیپ ٹو دی رائٹ پاتھ ٹو فالو دی پاتھ آف دوز اللہ انام اللہ علیہ آن ہوم اللہ بسٹورڈ گلوری اینڈ فیورس یو رید اللہ ان یو خف ان کم اینڈ ان دی لاسٹ اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ وانٹس ٹو میک تھنگس to lighten your burdens make things easier for you don't think this sharia to be a burden this is not a burden this is to make life easier for you more comfortable for you with more peace of mind with more you know contentment all these things which are the most valuable things for this life on earth also allah subhanahu wa taala to bestow these things upon you yurid allah wa yukhaffif ankum wa khulqa al insanu dhaifa And Allah very well knows that man has been created a weakling. There are weaknesses in his personalities. He has passions. He has emotions. He has desires. He has lusts. He has the id or libido haunting him. So all these things are there. He has created you. He knows the weak points in you. And he wants to fortify those weak points so that you are not led astray. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.